Hi everyone, I wanted to make a video to go over the changes that I'm implementing into the new advising toolkit, uh, which I'm calling version 3. As many of you know, I started this over a year ago now, um, where it, it was living on Google Sheets and then transitioned to Excel because Excel offered more um, functions and things that I could do with it. and. Over the year, I've added to it to include tools other than just the declaration sheet, which is why it morphed more into a tool box or tool kit. And uh, that continues now with some of the features I'm kind of excited to preview to you. Um, some of them are not 100% ready to go yet, but it, it should give you an idea of the, where I'm going with this uh, toolkit. So, when you receive this new version, you're going to get a individual copy. So it should have your name at the end of it. Um, and the reason for this is that in previous versions, you were getting the same copy, which when we opened it, we got all those messages about read only, someone else is editing it, that kind of thing. Um, inside of the declaration folder in the network drive, you'll also find some extra folders here that I've been toying with. One of them is called automation, and in there you should have your own personal folder. Uh, if you didn't see your name in this list, that's okay. It will create that folder for you. And basically what this folder does is it allows uh, users to create changes to their version of the document and then it syncs it with everyone else so that when you log in you're going to receive those updates um, to the program so that should help in some sense um, although i will likely still send out new versions of this to you as major changes happen but when minor things happen it should just sync with it Inside of these folders, you're going to find many little text documents. The longer that you go without getting into the toolbox, the more you'll have. Um, don't delete these. Don't touch these. Um, really, you don't need to get into these folders at all. The only thing that you need is access to the actual document, which I'll individually send to everyone. Now, once I click to open this document, you're going to see that it's going to take probably around... 40 seconds or so to open. Um, if it's taking a long time, minutes upon minutes, you will want to maybe tell me about that so I can look into it. The reason why it doesn't instantaneously open is because it's running some code uh, inside of Excel to hide different panels. So that way it really does feel more like a um, like a, an in individual app. And so as you see here, those toolbars and everything hid, and now we're presented with this login screen. Um, each of us will have a username, which is just your name, and a password that I will allow um, initially to be something, and then you will be able to change it uh, to whatever that you would like. And so I will uh, implement that soon. For me, I already have a password here. And depending on your level, uh, whether you're uh, someone who's helping to um, update this or whether you're someone who is just using this, you may get a different access. Once you log in, you should see your name uh, right here. If you don't, then something is amiss. Um, and depending on whether or not you have this admin right, you will be able to get into the admin tools. Not everybody will have access to that just because it's a lot of uh, a way to get in there to manipulate the code so that way uh, we can make edits here. As you see, it's a dashboard with many different icons and I assume that these are going to change as more programs, more things come about. Um, I'm sure we're familiar with the declaration page and the placement exams, but you're going to notice that it's going to uh, really look different compared to what you were used to. Version 3 here um, really updates that UI experience so that you can see um, 
nothing but uh, what I'm wanting to show you instead of all the code and everything that goes behind. And it doesn't look like it's Excel anymore. Um, you don't see those cells, you don't see the little lines, or you don't see the bar. And that's really what I wanted to do with this to make it a little bit better. Um, and if you want to avoid having to wait those 30, 40 seconds for the program to open, uh, you can just leave this open because it is going to sync with the database so that way it pulls in the information. And what information it might be pulling in is if I update any of the contacts or if I update the majors or if I update um, how many students have been declared because that's a new feature in this uh, toolkit where you will be able to see how many students have been declared in a set time frame. Uh, now, that might not be too useful to everybody, but for me, I kind of like seeing how many students have been declared using the tool that I created. Uh, if you don't care, then that's totally fine. So I am going to go through each of these different options. Um, I'll try to put timestamps in the description, so that way if you want to look at a specific uh, tool, you'll be able to choose from that uh, in the links, okay? So the first one is declaration. Declaration is something that uh, is what started this whole process so that way we didn't have to look at many different sheets that we were able to just put in the information and it would output everything. It would make the document, it would attach it, email it, everything like that. It still has all that functionality. And so when I click on the declarations, I am presented with this. Um, I'm very happy to say that I worked hard to make sure that this user interface is seamless um, and that you're able to just go through it like you would a normal program. And so with the normal programs, you expect to be able to use tab as a way to move between the fields. In the previous versions, I had something that worked but then took it away really quickly because it wasn't working with um, other pages in the document. It worked within the the, the declaration portion, but then I couldn't get it to work with the other areas. And so I have done that here. So if I just say uh, test student, notice I did not click or move my mouse. Um, I used the tab. So if I press tab, I'm going to get the ID. So I can type in an ID number here. It doesn't matter what it is. Student email is technically optional, but I like being able to send an email to the student. And then as I tab into the advisors field, you're going to see that it's going to drop down a menu because this is what we call a combo box, which uh, allows items to be within it. Um, it's a bit better than what was in the previous version because you can now search for any term. It doesn't have to just be the first name in here. So, for example, I could type in store and it'll come up with Sarah. Or I could type in just a couple letters like RM and that should come up with Brenda. And so it's a little bit more dynamic here. Um, one thing that you might be used to doing is using the down arrow uh, to move down the list. Now that will work if I do that. But as soon as I hit the down arrow, it fills it with the first one and then all the others disappear because now it's refiltering it with Alarisa's name being in the, the search box there. And so you should not use the down arrow unless you know it's the first one in the list. It's a kind of limitation here. As I hit tab, I'm going to move over to a similar box with majors. Again, I can just search for any term in here. So if I want to look for things that have the word studies in it, I could find all of those. Or maybe I want to look at just the Bachelor of Arts degrees. I could do that. Similarly, if I press the down arrow, I'm only going to get anthropology and everything else disappears. So it does have to be the first one in the list. Okay. Notice that it also skipped over the semester field because nine times out of ten, we're not necessarily changing that. It gets set it after a couple weeks into the semester and then we leave it alone. And so what I'm going to do is just tab over that. And if you do happen to need to change it, you can just come back and hit, like, for example, summer 
if I hit tab on here, nothing's going to happen. So I do want to click back into that section. I will probably implement something where if you tab from this box, it'll move you back over to the major section. Um, so that could be fixed by the time you receive this actual program. The minors, similar. We can search for any minor with any word. It's say if I want a science, I can look at the science list here. Um, and I can scroll down and see all the possibilities like that. You'll notice that there is a statistics panel here. Um, again, this is just for me being a little bit geeky. I want to see here uh, how many students have been declared when I'm using this. So you're going to notice at the moment that I'm only looking at a student who has one major and one minor, but we know that other students exist. And so if I'm in this box and I hit tab, I go back to the beginning. Hmm. So let's do that again, but instead of being in this box, how about I open up the second major area? Once I've opened up that second panel, if I'm in the minor box at the top, I can hit tab and it will start to move you down into that second major area. Um, and of course, this is optional. So we can see here it's optional, optional. Um, and it's dynamic enough to say uh, whether or not I meet the requirements. Well, it gives us the requirements. And so if I look here at major, anthropology, if I hit the I button to get more information about that, it'll tell me what requirements there are to declare. Now this is going to work the same if I pick a different major down here uh, and hit the I. It will give me whatever those requirements are. So it does change for each one. One thing that we might end up with is if you hit backspace and clear this out, if I start to type nothing's going to show up. And that's because you've cleared the entire search field. What you can do though is just click out of the field, click back in, and now it comes back up with that dynamic um, searching list. Okay, so once I've done that, if I want to declare with a second major, make sure you choose from the list and don't hit the X. If you hit the X and then you pull it back up, it's gone. The X is clearing it out, saying you don't want it. So if you do want it, leave this panel open when you hit declare. And then comes to these buttons down here. Of course, we have the clear button, which will clear out everything. It will actually even hide this panel. So if I hit clear, it's going to clear out everything. Put me back at the beginning. I'm just going to write test for all my fields and put in a major advisor. Uh, or not a major advisor, but you know, us general advisors. And I'm going to type in a major. When I hit declare, you're going to see it work through the normal process that we're used to. As we've come to suspect, you know, it's going to flicker a little bit. Um, you probably won't see all that text. I'll have that hidden. But it's going to bring up a couple things. It's going to first bring open your um, PDF here, and you can verify that all that information is correct. And then second, it's going to bring open your Outlook. I recommend that you open up Outlook before, just have it uh, the document or the program open. It works a bit faster if it's open already on your desktop. If you don't have Outlook on your desktop, you should probably do that in order to use this uh, program. And then, of course, it attaches the correct people to it. Um, don't know what this one is, so I might look into who who this is. Oh, test. Okay, sorry. Um, that apparently is an actual uh, email at SIOE. That's interesting. Um, and so what you want to do is, of course, add your signature here. You can say whatever you want and send, and that should be it. It goes to all the correct people. Of course, I'm not going to do that. And as we come to suspect, it's going to live within that network drive under the declarations folder. If I just filter this by uh, date modified, we can see that that test student is there. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Um, and it won't let me because I have the document open over here. And of course, I can look at that, make sure it's all good. 
and try again. Okay. And now, whenever I look at the declaration page, it's cleared out everything for me, but it also says two. This is because two students have been declared. Um, I, I declared one earlier and it said one, and now the second student has been declared, and so it says two. When I do the declare, it's also going to send out a tiny little file into each person's folder. And again, you don't have to worry about this, but if you're curious, for example, my folder has nothing because I made that change into my file. So I already have the change. But your folder, let's look at Ryan, has new information in it. Uh, and again, you don't need to worry about what this is, but it's living there just so that whenever Ryan logs into her program, that it uh, is able to pull that information. Okay, so let me, I'm going to go ahead and open up Ryan's program. And you're going to see those changes take place here in a second. Okay, so Ryan's is opening up. Again, it takes just a bit of time to have that initial opening sequence. I, I tried to make it a little bit faster and I'll continue to do so, but it, it, it's sort of like web now in a way where it's gonna take a second for you to get into the program. Once the program's open for the day, you can just leave it up and it's not gonna be a problem. So let me just log in as Orion. Okay. And again, it says, welcome Ryan here. When I click on declaration, it's going to do an update and pull those changes that I made into Ryan's program before anything else happens. And so if I hit declaration, it pulled in all that text, deleted those files, and now we have two, just like we have here. Similarly, if Ryan runs through a student and declares them, let me just put in information, Ryan, and it doesn't matter. Once she declares a student, all that normal stuff happens. We get the program, um, it's still working on it, and it says failed. Okay, well, let's try that one more time. Uh, the reason why it failed was because uh, the Outlook was not open. So again, that's an important reason why we need to keep Outlook open on our desktop before we declare. So let's try one more time with all this test information. Um, it did go through and kind of duplicate things here. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so that we expect. That's normal and I don't want to save any changes, and now it's saying four. Again, it's saying four because it did go through with the process before it failed, um, and so that is something that will be fixed in the program. When I look under my own folder, I see all these changes in here. As I look at my document here, I only see two, and the reason for that is I haven't done anything. I have not changed my page or anything, but as soon as I kind of go away from declaration, or if I tried to declare a new student, it's going to update. So let me just go ahead. You can see in this folder, it pulled out everything. So I know it already updated, but if I go in, now I'm at four. And if I go into my admin tools as an admin, I can look at my declaration reports here, and I do see where those two students are the same student. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and delete out one of them from this list. So that way, Ryan, when she actually, or anybody else, gets onto this program and goes in here, we'll see actually the right number of three. And so it's fixable if something like that happens, okay? All right, so that, in a nutshell, is the declaration. Undeclare works exactly the same. Um, I will probably have a statistic for students undeclared as well. Uh, at the moment, I don't have that, but it's easy enough to implement. And it'll just go in this panel here with the statistics. Um, and that's declare. And we have the clear all, which is going to hide everything and clear it out. If I hit dashboard, I go back to the dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and 
minimize Ryan's um, version of the document and talk to you about the next section, which is not quite so complicated. So the next option here is placement exams. This is pretty standard. Uh, the, this bar here will be hidden as well, but it's not at the moment. Uh, this is pretty standard in that uh, you just type in the number for whatever score they receive, and it will tell us what type of class they can take. In this case, if someone got a 15, they need ADO 82, which does not allow them to take English at it the same time, even though 23 normally would. It works for English. AccuPlacer is still being worked on because it's uh, there's a lot of numbers involved with that one. Uh, chemistry, we have those set up. Um, if you get a certain score on the chem readiness exam, you do need to enter the math subscore. And I don't remember what that is. There it is. So if I do that, then I got like 50 it'll tell me to enter the math subscore. Otherwise, I can just go by uh, whatever this number is if it doesn't say math subscore. That is really placement exams. Um, we can clear all of this out at the same time. So if you've done multiple different searches for information, let's guess it's pretty common during Springboard to type in SAT information. Um, and then if I hit clear, it's going to clear everything out. And so it's one button and done. Math placement the same. So it should give that information. Occasionally the boxes do kind of uh, cut off things. But if you click in the box and move over, you can see everything. All right. That is placement exams. Quick notes is something that I tried to implement a long time ago and then quickly hit the button and you were no longer able to access it because it just wasn't working in the way that I actually wanted it to. And so as I come into Quick Notes, you're going to see all those different fields populate along with this viewer over here, which is blank at the moment. And so basically the idea here is after my appointment or during the appointment, I can type in what I was doing. Again, tab works. It will tab through everything. So I just use tab there. Um, I can type in the major. I did not make this a searchable list because uh, I figured it's easy enough for us as advisors to just put in the major. You can type it however you want if you want to type the actual name, uh, but I tend to put the, the letters there. Um, let's just do something like this. I can tab over to this field. This field will drop down automatically, but at the moment it doesn't. And so we have uh, new freshmen and uh, of course they're on good standing or they're continuing student and they're on warning. Whatever I'd like to include there, I can. And it's optional. If you don't put anything, it's fine. Um, I can click on whether I've made referrals or not. And so let's say I referred them to the Career Development Center and financial aid as well as other. So if I want to put in something that's not listed here, I can click other and type in the name of what I required them to do. So let's say they have some Spanish, so FLTC, like they want to go to the Foreign Language Technical Center. I can do that. Testing, I could put in whether or not they need any sort of testing here. Okay, so if I just type that, um, let's just click a bunch of them. And then I can tab over, get into these fields, tab to the classes. Okay, and in the classes area, I can uh, start to type in whatever classes I recommended. Um, and there's enough here for 10 classes, which should be sufficient. If not, in the last box, you can just separate them by a period, and that would work to uh, list those classes. Okay, so let me just add a couple classes there. I'm going to tab, keep tabbing through all the other areas, and I get to additional information. Additional information is everything else that you would put in a note, more explanation that you would like to have. Um, and so we can talk about like student has transferring credit from SWIC or something like that, right? Any extra information you want to include. And then I'm going to hit generate and copy. So once I do that, it's going to create this um, here and it's going to say copied. 
if you have to click it a couple times, you can, and it will copy that information. How you can use this is if you go into your notes into Starfish. So let me just type in my information, go into Starfish, and for the sake of this, I'm just going to click on this first person and add a note or under the meeting part. Uh, of course, you can pick everything here and I can press Control V to paste in the information that was copied. The benefit of doing it this way is it keeps your notes consistent. And that is what is going to be important as other people are looking at your notes. And sometimes it's important for you as well, so that way you know what you did. Um, as we can see, the majors there, the minors there. Uh, it tells me the, the type of student and what their status is. It gives me the information along with saying student was referred to the following. Remember, FLTC was added to the end. And then it tells me a test they were referred to take and lists the classes they were asked to take. And at the bottom, you'll find that additional section with information. All right. Let me just minimize that. And of course, the clear button is going to clear everything out like normal. And it should put us back into this box, but it, it doesn't at the moment, so I will fix that. Um, and as you can see, this part is cleared out as well. And it's ready to go again. The contact change I'll come back to at a later date. It's not quite ready yet, but uh, that is something I will look at at the end of the video here. So uh, we're going to skip it for now. GPA calculation is what you would expect. Let's say they have 12 quality points here and tab, then they have three hours. So overall their GPA is a four. The semester GPA doesn't say anything because I haven't given any classes over here. The new overall GPA is invalid because there's no new classes as well. And this is um, without repeating. So let's say they got a nine here. So we know they actually did, they got a B in one class, one semester. So overall, they had one class and they got a B in it. So what was that class? Let's say it was ACS 101. That class gives us the three credit hours. This should not need to be populated. Um, if you don't see the right number here, then it may be that the class is not in there. And if that's the case, you can use what's called placeholder. Placeholder, and you can type in a parenthesis, number parenthesis and make sure to put a space and that will give you the right number. So as you can see, I have all the way up until I think six. Most classes are not more than that, so five is good. And so you can do that. Um, let's do ACS 101. The previous grade we know was a B because they have a three. Uh, and so if they get an A, you're gonna get it to calculate their new GPA. Their new overall GPA would be a four. If we weren't repeating this class, it would be 3.5. So if it was just a new class that was not a repeat, then it would be a 3.5. If we go to B, of course, the GPA wouldn't change because it's the same. As you tab, you can add more classes either by hitting the Add button or by just simply tabbing. So as I tab, I'm going to get more classes. And I think I put enough here for, let's see, what is this, eight different classes. Um, if that's not sufficient, we I could always add more. I'm just limited based on the screen size that I picked and the fonts and everything. And so I might make these smaller and add in the option to add more. I'm going to go to home. That's GPA. Of course, I can clear out everything there. Um, another thing I could do as well as is just hide one of the classes or whatever. That's an option. Okay. And then the one that I really am excited about and is really in its infancy here is the financial aid appeals option, which to many is probably going to be something they enjoy. Um, I know I will because financial aid plans take a long time and can be quite cumbersome to make because we tend to use the templates that are online a lot of the time. 
um, I can envision many of my financial aid students are within their second semester. So the first semester they just did really poorly. And so the second semester is really just the plan, right? Just repeating those things and um, I don't have to change too much. And so if I hit financial aid appeals here, I'm going to be presented with uh, usually a blank document and that's what I want to start with. Uh, so if it's not blank, you can just hit this trash can here. Now this one does take a bit of time to load in because there's a ton of shapes and buttons and things going on here to make it work. Um, at the moment, I have the semesters listed and there are nine of them. And that's because the normal financial aid plan has room for nine semesters, even though most degrees are only eight semesters. It gives you that extra room just in case there's a summer or something there. Um, and so what I'm going to do is populate it with the accountancy major. So I am I'm envisioning a situation where I had a, an accountancy student who needs a financial aid plan because they failed their first or second semester or whatever. What I can do is hit the search button and it's going to fill in everything here based off of the normal plan. We're just going to give that a second to work. And it does take a, just a minute. Sometimes it's faster than this, but it just depends on um, whether or not you've had this open before. I'm going to pause the video. All right, so I'm not sure what happened there, but um, I have populated it with the accountancy. Let me just go ahead and try that again for you. So if we're on a blank document, I hit accountancy. I go ahead and I search. It's going to fill in all of the different fields for me in the normal way. Now, some of these little third boxes in the row have uh, like an orangish color uh, to them. And the reason for that is because I don't know exactly what or how that's counting or what the specific is. And so as we can see, accountancy's plan says they can take CS108 um, or uh, CMIS 108. Now most of the time they're taking CMIS 108. So I can just go ahead and clear that out. And I don't need to worry about the second or third box. The second box is the credit hours. The third box is that third box in the financial aid plan where they ask if it's a major class, a minor class, an elective, or general education. And so for this, I don't know what the technical right answer is of whether that's a major class or a general education. I, it's kind of both. Um, I could just type that in, but if I hit this refresh, it's going to refresh that for me. So that way I can see how that's counting. Um, and then I can choose whether I want to put G for general education, capital M for major course, MN for minor courses, or E for elective. In this case, it is going to be, let me refresh it again, G for general education. And we can see that that's the case on this for this most part. Now, if they've successfully completed the entire semester and it really was like four classes, we could just delete this whole entire semester. And so that it, we just shift everything over on the plan. I do that, it's going to shift all of those classes over on the plan. And also, I can move them around. So let's say I know they're not going to take this breath finding performance in the fall semester. I can just go ahead and simply click the down and it's going to put it into the correct semester. Um, so if I'm going Let's say it moved it there. But notice that it's swapping. So that first accounting scene class did get moved over here to the first semester. Let's say I did want it on the second semester. It's easy enough for me just to type accounting 200 here. Click the trash can on this one. It gets rid of that. Hit the refresh button. It's going to recalculate that. Let's say I know what BFPA they're taking. They're taking Music 111. Refresh. Now I have it listed. 
The only issue with the refresh button is going to be if you don't fix these cells. Uh, so for example, I left it as a BLS and I type three here and I say it's a major course uh, or gen ed course. Um, that's fine. And if you print out your document at this point, it would work. If you refresh the document, it's going to recalculate BLS as a, an unknown value with this. So let's just watch that. See? So you do want to be careful when you're using the refresh if you've manually overridden any of the other cells there without changing the field. So for example, biology 111, if I did that, it would fix it and it would do it that way. So I encourage you to type in the actual name of the class if you know it. Of course, as you get further out into different majors, let's take a look at anthropology as an example. Um, as you get further out, they might have just electives or minors and stuff like that. Um, I'm toying with the idea of having it automatically say this elective minor is three hours. And I'm not sure if it's okay on a financial aid plan just to put that or if they need a specific class. Um, for me, it doesn't make sense to say specifically what anthropology class they're gonna take five semesters from now. And so I would just leave it at this and you could just type in three um, and then G like that, or not G, but M for major. Of course, you want to be able to uh, put in your information because on the, the PDF itself, it does ask for some of that information. If I can, I can pull open a financial aid plan example uh, where this is what we're used to seeing with those fields. And I'm just looking at recreating this second semester or the second page of this um, and attaching that to an already completed first page, which I don't have the steps for that yet where I can completely do that all within Excel. This would require me to merge PDFs and delete the second page that's already there, uh, which is still less time than for me to type in every cell here because I'm saving times with having to type in the credit hours and everything. So if I do that, I want my name to end up down here in the advisor name section. Um, I want the phone number to be populated with the general office phone number. I want the advisor email, I want the department signature. I'm not going to automate because you should be able to sign that yourself, whether virtually or on printed paper. Date's going to default to whatever today is. And so the next step of the process is going to be type in file name. So for this, I'm just gonna say test PDF, but you can name your file whatever you would like to be consistent with yourself. Um, the next box here is the actual save PDF button. This is kind of the last step uh, in the process. However, there's one more thing to this, which is this box here, advisor recommendations. And that is going to be filled out from this panel here. Uh, when I click on it, I get that a box where I could type in whatever I want to put as a recommendation to the student. Um, I do have a generic template here, uh, but that can be changed easily to whatever you want it to say. Okay. And now if I hit save PDF, you're going to be prompted to pick where you want that PDF to be saved. I'm just gonna put it on my desktop. And it should go ahead, make that PDF and open it. So as you can see, it looks pretty much the same, um, except now these fields are not editable technically, uh, which in my opinion is a good thing because that means students can't edit your PDF and act like you signed it. So it's more static. Um, I don't know how a financial aid is going to feel about that. I will we'll have to talk to them and see, but this makes it easier. It's populated the semesters, all of the semesters. It has put in the classes exactly as they are listed. So something I would not do is leave these like this, where there's a question mark. I would actually uh, either type in three in general education or type in a humanities class um, and then refresh it so that it actually prints. And let me just show you what that would do um, here. So with this humanities, again, if I type English 111, 
or whatever class meets the humanities, hit refresh, uh, and, and experience health. So PBHE 111, I believe, right? Okay. And now if I hit save one more time on my desktop, didn't even change the file name because I do want it to override the old file with that name. And here we go again. So now you can see that it's populated those classes with that information and it says that it's a general education course. And really that is the financial aid automation. The issue at the moment is it will take me quite a while to go through like all 150 of these and type out the default semester plan. And so this is not something that we're going to immediately be able to use, although I did want to preview it because it is something that I'm actually looking forward to using because financial aid plans are tedious because a lot of the time it's just me copying what's on that website anyway. And so this just makes it a little bit quicker. And with that said, that really wraps up the majority of what I've worked on so far in version three of the toolbox. Um, contact change, I'm still working on to get that to work. But at the moment, if I were to pick any major we have at SIUE, it should fill in the major information here. And then you'll be able to type into these fields, give me additional information and send that information off to me. At the moment, it does not work. Um, I'm thinking about having this more automated so that way I don't have to actually go in. It, it might actually go and replace those contacts immediately. So that way you can go back to the declaration page and then send your declaration and it'll end up going to the right person. But that is how that is. If you are someone who uh, gets the admin tools because uh, you're director or someone that is helping me to maintain this. Um, this will just be extra stuff. In addition, it could be tools that only you as an advisor can have. So I know I was working with Brenda on a reporting tool. I could potentially go ahead and put her uh, a copy of that into her own little section of the dashboard. And so you can see this area of the dashboard being extra tools for you specifically and not necessarily the team as a whole. And so if I click admin, I have um, some options here, one of which is to make sure I get rid of those bars, which I will do before I release this because it just makes it cleaner, looks better. Um, a couple of things in my own personal area of the back end is that I can edit those classes because SIUE has a ton of classes. Um, and so I will edit those classes and make that available uh, so that way, you know, each of the options are going to work because we, we need to, I need to list out the classes with the hours and the type. Um, this took a long time to make as well because there are actually like 3,000 plus classes at SIUE that they have on the books. And so I spent a lot of time last summer going through and adding in the thousands of classes as well as the thousands of possibilities for one class. So this example of 470A, they can take it for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine credit hours. And so doing that there was a little bit more challenging so that way you know what it is. That's how placeholder one works here with the one, two, three, four, five in parentheses so that you can specify be specific when you want to identify which type of that class is offered. Um, this visual button here is just for me to be able to go ahead and get those toolbars back to, S uh, to the Excel document so that way I can make more changes. You should not need that. If you run into a problem with your program being all wonky, uh, give me a, uh, your information and I'll try to figure it out. Um, the advisor list is literally just a list of advisors and lists whether or not they are um, logging in successfully. So I'm not going to show that. The financial aid appeals update is all of those classes listed with their templated um, classes for each semester. And so this is the document now that I'm working on to fill out. It's a lot of information that goes into that.
All right, and then let's see what else do we have. Declaration reports, we looked at that a little bit ago where I can see the list and it's going to share that number of how many are in this list and who did it. And so this is just nice for record keeping statistic purposes. Um, yeah, that's it. Major minor updates. This is where I can update those majors and those contacts and that kind of thing. So this is stuff that normally you as an advisor may not actually need to do or to look at. You just are more interested in the front end of things and that's more of a back end thing. When you're ready to close out the program, you can hit this log out button, which will take you back to this page here. Um, but when you also hit the X, so let me just go back in. When you hit the X, it is going to save your document as itself. And so making sure that you cleared out anything will make it easier for you to work with it in the next round. But when I hit the X, it's going to log me out first and then save and close the document. And then that way, if I open this back up, I'm going to see that it saved it, but I'm actually now on um, the login screen. And these are all the recovery documents that uh, I will be deleting. Remember, the first time you log in, or when you open the document initially, that is the longest wait, where you're going to have to wait 30 to 40 seconds, sometimes faster, sometimes a little slower. Um, it doesn't take too terribly long, and I want to view these later. So this is what you would be greeted with once more. I hope that you all enjoy the new toolbox when it is released. You will receive more information from me, probably more individual videos of each tool. If you have any ideas of things that you would like to see in the toolbox, some other kind of tool that you can visualize, let me know. I've toyed around with a couple more ideas, one of which being um, preparation guide for Springboard and how uh, you could maybe automate the process of creating a note to the student, that kind of thing um, within there. And so I'll probably work on that to have it ready for the next Springboard. But at the moment, it didn't make sense to start on it since Springboard is basically over uh, for the most part. But if you can think of any other tools that you think would be a good idea to have in there, just let me know and I can work on possibly implementing that if that's something the entire team can use. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy your day. Let me know if you have any questions about any of this um, and feel free to play around with it once it's available to you.